Good morning. Welcome to Tuesday's training. I'm Marshall Berkshire and I help codependents rediscover their well-being and happiness after narcissistic abuse and help them accomplish that by healing the trauma bond, by helping them come to know, live and love who they are and create happy, healthy relationships in the world. I'm excited to have you here today. Today we're going to be talking about putting how to put yourself first. So this is number 15 in the Reclaiming Yourself series. So if you're new to me, I bounce around from different series that I'm teaching in because I teach based on really what I'm inspired to teach on currently. So <coughs> good evening or <coughs> good morning <coughs> or coughing for whatever the, you know, why not, why not, right? So before we get started today, I need to share this out to the community. The community is your safe haven here on the internet where you can find tools, guidance, and support in your journey out of codependency and then sustaining the well-being, happiness, and respect you develop as you exit codependency. The link is above on Facebook. It's below on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to get this shared out here real quick. I just have to find the right button as they keep moving. There it is. Moving things around. Yay. Okay. And voila. So good morning. Let me know you're here in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on today's training. And it is nice to see you. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Luis. Good to see you guys there. <sighs> so yesterday, in the Heal Yourself strategy, we were talking a lot. Well, yesterday was all about what I call restoring sanity. It's a practice of six steps that allow us to get in contact with reality and to understand where we're coming from, what's going on for us, what's really happening. Well, part of this... It's all about choosing oneself first. So there's a specific order I teach my students when it comes to relating. So in codependency, we tend to put the other person first. So it's kind of like the you, 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 then maybe, sort of, kind of me order of things. What this does is it gets us externally oriented or externally fixated on the other person's thoughts, feelings, wants, needs their world. We're not in contact with our world. We're not in reality. We're in fantasy. And when we are in fantasy, we do not understand what we need and what we want for our well-being. Instead, we're seeking that from other people through their approval, through their rejection. We're ignoring the pattern of behaviors that show up in the relationship. We're ignoring the impact of those behaviors and the consequences that come with them. We're absorbed in their yard, their world. So, yeah, that is a big problem. How do we get out of this? Well, there's a specific order to it. And it is literally the opposite of what I, you know, the opposite of the other approach of you, 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 then maybe me. It's me, then you. So take a moment, write that down. Me, then you. Now, often when I teach this, I'm going to smooth this here. Often when I teach this, I get a, I, I kind of think get this pushback from from people because, man, Marshall, that's selfish. Uh, that, that's just plain selfish. Why 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 is it that way? What about them? That's your codependency talking. That's the conditioning and programming you've received from other people who are in fact selfish. So let's define selfishness. Selfishness is someone demanding access to a resource of another person that they have no intrinsic right or entitlement to. And since peer-to-peer -peer relationships are built on consent and privilege, no one is selfish when they say, no, I don't want that, or no, I'm not going to give that to you, or I'm going to do this first. So that selfishness is the person telling you you're selfish for doing X, Y, and Z, when really you're favoring yourself. So me, then you. This order does a number of different things for us. <clears throat> First of all, it gets us in contact with our safety. So there's three things all codependents have to learn and master in their healing, and that is restoring and maintaining their safety, restoring and maintaining their sanity and connection with reality, and restoring and maintaining their connection to self. So first, if I'm referencing me, I am now putting myself in a safe category. Like, hmm, 
Is this safe for me? Is this adding to my well-being and my happiness? <laughs> Hi, Louise. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Laura. Yeah, it is like oxygen. And I'm sure both of you are like, oh, well, this is a repeat of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well-being and happiness. That's what we have to judge things based on. Does this add to my well-being and my happiness? So now I'm securing my safety. And now I'm accessing reality. What do I think? What do I feel? What do I want? What do I do not want? Does this align with me? So we're back to sanity, back to reality. And ultimately, happiness is, does this what I want? Does this add to me? Does this bring me joy too? So now we're back to self. That's why it's a very powerful, very critical, very important order. Me, then, you. The other thing it does for us is it creates honesty in the experience, in the relationship. Because if I'm giving things or doing things that are not, that I don't want to do, but I'm doing them anyway, I am teaching the other person what to expect. And I am basically lying. I am sending a message that is not accurate to reality. It's dishonest. I know that's strong, but that's the only way my brain sees it. If I'm doing A when I don't want to do A, hmm, there's a, you know, there's a lack of integrity there. There's, there's a disintegration of personal loyalty and integrity in action there. So I have to step back and go, and I ask myself these three questions. Does this, is this something I want to do? Do I have capacity to do this? Does this add to my well-being and happiness? That gets me into order. That helps me understand where I'm coming from and where I'm at in relationship to a request made of me or something I want to ask of someone else or situations coming up. Then I can communicate it to the other person, me, then, you. Created honesty there. We created, created clarity. This is how we put ourselves first. This is how we practice self-orientation or Nurture my use for it's called internal orientation. This breaks us free of codependent thinking. Because now we're not running around in their yard, wondering what they're thinking, what they're feeling, trying to make them happy while avoiding ourselves. We're looking at what brings us joy, and we're going to say yes or no to the request, or we're going to ask for it and see what they do. Because in the healthy dynamic, the healthy relationship, they will also be looking at, does this, does, is this what I want? Do I have capacity for this? Does this add to my well-being and happiness? And if you both get a yes to this, you get joy. You get relational joy out of that. If you, one gets a yes and one gets a no, then you get a difference of opinion. You can go do it in separate ways. This is honesty. This is consent-based connection. This is where we find our fulfillment and our happiness. This is where we sustain and protect our well-being. This is the opposite of codependency. And it's an action or behavior practice of self-respect. That's the power of it. Me, then, you. So I'm going to look at the comments here. Yeah, Louis says, Yes, I feel so selfish when I think of myself first. We feel selfish because we're conditioned that way see guilt and shame are programmed emotions we were taught to feel guilt or shame about a thing and the way that was taught to us is someone guilted or shamed us when we did a thing so they reflected it to us so i said i wanted this and no i don't want to do that and they're like you're really selfish and then i agreed with them and i internalized that as i'm selfish when i do blah 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 when in reality is that true? Is it true that I'm selfish? Is it possible that it's not selfish? Is taking care of my well-being and happiness a good thing? These are choices we get to make. These are choices we get to choose and live from because we're sovereign beings. We have the right to make that choice and live it. And other people get to live with it. Because they're not entitled to anything from you and you're not obligated to give them anything from your resources. 
Peer-to-peer -peer relationships built on consent and privilege means that we have to gain consent. We've got to ask. We've got to build agreement. And a privilege means that it can happen. It can come and go at any time. And so it's all based on a want or a desire or freedom of the people involved in that. So when we encounter our own internalized selfishness, this is a chance to give it back to the other person and say, you know, I can understand, you know, I see that you think this is selfish. Good luck working that out. I'm going to choose me first because I matter to me first. I respect me first. That starts there, and then you can let them, I mean, get out of their way. If they think it's selfish, cool, they need to go grow up. They need to go mature and evolve out of their entitlement and learn how to build consensual relationships and realize that they're not, nobody's obligated to do anything for them. Yeah, they might, well, they want you to put your, your, yeah, your, your, oxy, your oxygen mask on first, yep. Well, and it's not just that, because we're not talking about emergency situations as well. We're talking about favoring and respecting our well-being. We're treating ourselves with love. We matter just as much as the other person does. There isn't this competition of who's more important. It's not about that. It's about prioritization of self. See, in codependency, we don't do that. We discard it. In this reality, in, in the self-respect reality, it's more like, I matter and I respect that and I, I respect that you matter too and I respect that you're an adult and that you can do this for yourself too. We're not dealing with helpless children here, guys. These are not, these other adults are not helpless people who don't know what to do. They're, they're not. They're capable adult beings that can go out and do this themselves. They do not need us to take care of them in any way, shape, or form. They need to learn to do that because that's their job. That's their responsibility. Now, if we're dealing with a child, then we have a, you know, that, that's a different dynamic in that we can meet the child's needs, help them meet their own, help them grow into their own capacity. But it's, it's important to, to remove ourselves from this idea of rescuing and of martyrdom and, and, and this, this fantasy, this notion that other people can't do what we need to do for them or they say we need to do for them that's not not real they can do it they just choose not to and then we got to let them inherit the consequence of that choice so that they can grow up if they choose to that's the rub there hey rita i am good it's a nice tuesday morning here so louise asks do you have a selfish release tool because my brain tells me this not even Someone else is telling me. Now, that's pretty strong programming. There's going to be one. I believe it's in the university under the, the um, rapid heal tools. I'll have to go look and see. Um, but there's one called releasing responsibility over other people. And that's one that can help there too. Selfishness can also be anchored in shame and guilt. If you release on that, that can get you through that too. Yes, Kaya. Relationships built on consent are so fun, so calm and fun. They are. They actually really are because you get to build this really con, con, um, consensual trust, intimacy, vulnerability. It's stable. Nobody's trying to get something from someone else. There's no resentment brooding in the background to get you. So let's see. Pam says, treating ourselves with love is so important, a lesson to, uh, to work towards things. I always put other sorts. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's treating ourselves with respect. It's seeing ourselves as equally important, valuable, valid, and, and to prioritize ourselves like we do others. And it's to let others make their choices. It's to get out of their yard and really respect their sovereignty and their adulthood and stay out of controlling things that way. Yeah, retrieving value is a big deal there, Kaya. Yeah. yeah, because we retrieve our value from their happiness, from their world. We internalize it and anchor it in ourselves and we become much more powerful. If you're... If this is resonating with y'all, this is all taught in the Heal Yourself strategy. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. It's open for enrollment. You can jump in at any time and start the course and restore your safety, sanity, and self. And that way you can be free of codependency and free to go on forward in discovering who you are and creating happy relationships for yourself. 
So this is what we do. This is how we do it. Me, then you. It is the proper, honest order for making relationship and connection with other people. It's how we keep ourselves in a relationship. It's how we show respect to ourselves and to them. And it's how we show, it's how we live beyond codependency so that we can create consensual, happy, and fun relationships, friendships, and connections in our world. So thank you guys again for showing up for today's training. If you're on Facebook, say hi to me. If you're on YouTube, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And if you're on Facebook, share this out with people you see will benefit from it. And if you're, again, looking for support, guidance, and tools, join the community. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you in our next training.